Hey, hello Vineyard, happy Wednesday. We have had our first thunderstorm of the year, so I am confident in declaring the official death of all things that are winter. So with that also comes the end of our winter small groups. They're all wrapping up here this month. So we're looking to summer and we're putting together our summer small group offerings. So if you're interested in leading a group, if you've got an idea for a group, or if there's a group that we've offered in the past that you're interested in, uh, please let us know. Any of these things, you, you can communicate to us by shooting us an email at info at billingsvineyard.org or by dropping a connect card into the box on Sunday morning. Summer small groups are going to run from June through August and signups are going to begin in May. So we are cranking this out pretty quick. If you got any ideas or are interested in, in playing a role, a part in this, uh, please let us know so we can begin those conversations. Now, this past Sunday, we wrapped up our journey through the book of John, looking for the theme of glory and how glory affected the lives of those that witnessed it and experienced it. Now, two major points emerged as, as we unpacked the book of John. First is that, that God is real, right? That God is real and able to be experienced. And second, that this experience changes us in some way, shape, or form. John 21 and the restoration of Peter at the charcoal fire is really a fitting example of this and a great way to end the book and launch us into what comes next. Peter's narrative with Jesus began with an awareness of how much he needed a savior and how in, in Luke 5, we notice how Jesus was different, Peter noticing how Jesus was different and how being in the presence of Jesus called out of Peter a true identity, the real Peter that God created to be the adopted son of the Most High. Now, all through the Gospels, in each of the Gospels, we see Peter being trained and taught. And he doesn't get a lot of credit for how much he actually learned and applied. He had the balls to get out of the boat and walk on the water. He did pull a sword in the garden to defend Jesus. He wasn't a bumbling failure that, that some people make him out to be. Uh, but we also know that he did fail. He did fall short of the glory of God. By one charcoal fire, he commits a sin so egregious that he kind of self-disqualifies and leaves the path that Jesus had him on. But then, the weighty felt presence of God. This glory, this weighty felt presence of God brings him back to another charcoal fire and calls him to remember. To remember everything. Remember the truth. Remember sin. But remember the training. Remember the lessons. Remember the miracles. Remember the signs. Remember the wonders. Remember the love. Jesus had demonstrated the power of confession, repentance, and faith that allows the sacrifice of Jesus to be real for us. And Peter shows us that. Three times Peter denied Jesus. And then three times Peter is restored as he stood on the shore of the lake by the charcoal fire. Now the charcoal fire helped him remember. We talked about those two charcoal fires, but also think about the third charcoal fire, the fourth, the fifth, the 383rd charcoal fire that Peter would experience. Each time that smell would hit his nose for the rest of his life, I imagine that he would remember the grace that was poured out on him by Jesus. The experience changes Peter as he works from that point to take the glory he felt to be the glory that he reflects. The grace he felt is the grace that he reflects. Now, we must remember our own charcoal fire, right? And, and with that memory, we must allow others to experience the same. Their own charcoal fire with Jesus but also their own charcoal fire with us. Now, last night, Jenna was reading me a quote, and I'm going to butcher that quote for you right now. Um, somebody that she was reading from somewhere said, an offended Christian is a Christian that has forgotten the price, or something like that. I like that. Uh, an offended Christian is a Christian that has forgot the price. An offended follower of Jesus, then, is one that's forgotten the glory to, and thus is not reflecting the glory through. An offended Christian is one that needs to remember or, or needs to have the fresh whiff of a charcoal fire. Now, I think this angle of glory is important because it highlights that we are perfecting works, not perfect works, which is something that is true for me, but I must allow it to be true for you. In this sacred space that, that we, we have, we fight the battle of discipleship as we remember the grace we felt and allow that to become grace that we reflect. In this battle, though, enters the power of the living God as the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit bringing us the strength to replicate the faith of Peter and remember, remember well that, that the grace poured out for us becomes grace that we pour out for others. As we begin this new journey this coming Sunday, remember the smell of charcoal and what it means for us as we interact with each other, but also when we meet those in the time between the Sundays. 
Now, we're about to start a new journey as we get close to the day of Pentecost, a journey that is going to explore the Holy Spirit and how the Spirit of God makes us able to recognize glory, glory to, and then become glory through. Vineyard, I love that we get to do this together. Please pray for me and know that I'm praying for you, and I will see you on Sunday.